early on that we needed to settle the food problem because if you can grow food, it's empowering, it's powerful. In fact, I would say growing food is one of the most dangerous occupations on the face of this earth because you are in danger of becoming free. The trail is dark and dusty, the road is kind of rough. It was started back there when uh, you know, the hippie movement, uh, I was part of that. It had a transformation back then. I think the defining moment had something to do with the Vietnam War. That generation was, that I was part of was graduating from college and they were being subject to the draft. The war ended in the fun times for me and I had to uh, be serious about things. And then I found myself thinking, hey, wait a minute, there's different ideas, there's alternatives to think about. And so I put on the brakes and backtracked and said, what can I do that I really want to do, that I really need to do? I started asking questions about, hey, what, what are we uh, here for? And uh, what are we put on this earth to do? And asking questions, I guess that's a dangerous thing. <laughs> Today, agriculture is going far beyond nature to produce new miracles. 2001 when we found out that genetically modified food had entered the food supply I said you did what to me to my food to my children and as soon as I knew that they had attacked my children with this foreign stuff I got mad and I said I had to stop this once and for all because we were just fiddling around this was a seminal moment that I said I'm not going to take this any longer I knew I couldn't do much about the air we breathe and the water we drink but when it came to putting this alien food into my children's mouth I wasn't going to let that happen so I said, we are going to grow as much food as we can here. It was our family home, and we've turned it into a, an, a homestead. And because it's in the city of Pasadena, uh, surrounded in, uh, by all the urban development, we call it an urban homestead. We have a major street, we're right by Old Town Pasadena, another freeway comes through here, so we're smack dab in two, between two freeways. We're on a fifth of an acre here, but a tenth is cultivated, so our property is 66 by 132. This is my front yard, and this was my first area where I decided to take a stand here and plant something useful for the front yard instead of grass. I said that, that grass was costing me too much, too much money in water, too much time. It was, it would never looked that good and I decided to make some changes. My lawn fell victim to six inches of mulch. Okay, you see that? Can you tell any difference? A lot of people start looking at how we're growing food it's because we grow 6,000 pounds of fruits and vegetables a year on a tenth of an acre of cultivated land. You know, you have to rethink the possible. We're showing them that you can start where you are and do something different. Depending on the season, we would say we can get up to 80% of our vegetarian diet grown on our property in the, in the summertime. In the wintertime, we go back to about 50 to 60%. Literally living off their land means the Gervais get the freshest ingredients possible, even when Mother Nature repeats herself. There was one time that was the soup we had for, I think it was six, six meals in a row. I called it the 007 soup because it never died. <laughs> It was just kept coming back and coming back. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the soup. Gardening is something people should love to do. It's not a uh, chore, and it's uh, beneficial because you get some reward from it. They say the average salad travels 1,400 miles to get to the table. We chose to go a step backwards. Our salad travels 40 feet to our table, many steps backwards. Have you ever looked at your yard and wished that you could do something else with the space? Well, one Southern California family has, and it is amazing. KCAL 9 anchor Ann Martin has more. There's something different about the Dervais family home in Pasadena. The traditional green lawn has been replaced by a thriving organic garden. We're blessed with Southern California weather so we can uh, grow almost all year round. So why not take advantage of it? Jules Gervais and his family take advantage of every square inch. This is okay. beautiful arugula here. Yeah. Do you mind if I just sure, pick help a stem? Yourself. And yeah. So it's all organic. Just, I can sure. just eat it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Nothing's on there. Oh, that's really good. Here comes lunch. 
How beautiful is that? All right. Isn't this wonderful, sitting outside with a beautiful salad we picked ourselves? This is wonderful. And, you know, picking it right then. So what was it picked half hour ago? Mm-hmm. So you had... Mm. The delicious taste of this salad is all the argument that you would ever need to grow your own variety of vegetables in your backyard. It's so good. It's really wonderful, Jules. People have been doing this for a long time, and they've used to play at Victory Gardens in World War II. It went out of style when um, you know we could get produce from all around the world. Mm -hmm. But now do we have to ask ourselves the question: Do we want to get produce from all around the world? Do we want to get produce out of season? Do we want to have uh, corn when corn does not grow in your local area? So just making that choice of buying in season, you're making a conscious choice to say, no, that food has got to be grown in this area or, or in this climate zone. And you're not going to get it from some other country, another part of the world. You're, you're choosing to you know, eat where you live. And that choice can make a big difference. We just picked those today. It's almost like his own garden. You know, it doesn't go through any any handling, extra handling, or go through the market and, and they bring it back. It just goes straight. It's a direct route. Got a package full of wishes. Get rid of negativity. Well, we are all plagued by doubts. When I first started this, I didn't believe I could do it. So you have to take a risk. You have to go out on a limb and you have to say, you know, maybe I should try something that I've never done before and, and just stop being negative and try to do something positive. Turning it around and saying you can do something is, is a start. We all have to make it. Don't look for others to change. You start by changing yourself. Uh, the government can't do it. The corporations won't do it. So what we have to do is we look to ourselves and, and point the finger straight back at ourselves and say, what can I do? Because change begins with you. History starts now. Here. When the lost find the name 